Hey folks, I'm totally not named Dan, though you can call me that if you want. And if I look like crap today, I'm sorry, but I kind of feel like it as well. I made the rookie mistake of playing Garfield Kart of all things instead of sleeping last night. My body decided to wake me up at 6.30, even though that's not a thing it's ever done before. So, I'm not sure what was going on there, but I now have some ridiculous meme games. If you want to see me play them, they'll probably pop up on my Twitch sometime. Link in the description down below, and if you want to see them sooner, obviously talk to me on Discord or Twitter, which I'll leave there as well. In the meantime, though, I've been looking to make this video for quite a while, so I figure I'm going to do it now anyway, despite the fact that I'm not feeling my best, because I feel like it'd be a great idea to get a glossary of all the uh, My Hero Academia CCG and Universus keyword traits and abilities out there, tell you what they all mean, what they all do, and just make it easier for new players to keep track of them. So, let's get to it, shall we? I'm going to start out with the traits, because they're nice and simple. They don't actually do anything per se. They just add flavor to cards and let other cards look at specific types of foundation or asset or attack or whatever. So first on my list is the ally keyword, which represents an attack, a foundation, an action, an asset that brings in an additional character from outside the fight. So, for example, Summon Dark Shadow is the big one in MHA. It's the additional character that lives within Tokoyami. So it's not an actual character card. You don't get to play Dark Shadow as a character, but you do get to do some fun things with him as an action. And that is what the ally keyword is about. You'll see it on basically every card type, and you'll see things like Tokoyami's attacks that interact with it quite nicely. Similarly, the punch keyword and the kick keyword, they're a lot more straightforward in terms of what they mean. I don't think you need me to explain what a punch or a kick is, but Deku uses the punch keyword a lot on his abilities. And kick keyword he will almost certainly use in the future as well. These appear exclusively on attacks, as far as I'm aware, which, you know, you'd kind of expect given that they are attack types. The same goes for Fury, Bakugo's keyword, though I could have sworn Scorpion's kit in standard included one or two Fury foundations until I checked for this video, because he has a very angry backstory, and that's what Fury represents. It represents an angry attack, an angry backstory, an angry action, anything like that. Similarly, Slam is another fairly straightforward one. It's just an attack that rams into somebody. I don't think this appears on any other card type, but I could be wrong on that. Then both Charge and Weapon are pretty common on attacks, but you'll also see the occasional Weapon Foundation which means while Jiro uses a mix of charge and weapon cards as attacks to balance out whether she gives plus speed or damage, Momo prefers to have weapon foundations in the mix as well so that she can get the most out of her pure weapon build. So it's interesting that the two of them do slightly different things with one of the same keywords. Weapon, it's fairly straightforward what it means. On an asset, it means this asset is a weapon. On a foundation, it's usually some specifically weapon-related backstory. On an attack, it's an attack that uses a weapon. Charge, however, I'm not totally sure on. It could be an attack imbued with energy, so a charged attack, or it could be an attack that requires being charged up. It's a little ambiguous, and I don't feel like they've done the best at getting that across. However, I do quite like a lot of its interactions, especially the ones with Ochako in the yep, current My Hero cards. Our last two keywords for this section, though, Tech and Taunt, don't really appear in the current My Hero set. They're being introduced a bit more in the second one. And while Tech, as high-tech cards, is kind of cool, I'm a lot, lot more interested in Taunt, because Taunt has had very little support in universes as a whole so far. Taunt has always been sort of jokey drawback attacks, ones that aren't really all that good, 
and are clearly the sort of thing that Dan from Street Fighter would use, rather than the sort of thing that you'd expect from a standard character. However, it seems as though Monoma in the second My Hero set, Crimson Rampage, is going to be doing some fun things with that keyword and making it maybe a little bit more relevant. So I'm very curious to see how Taunt develops from here. There are, however, a couple of additional traits that aren't in My Hero, such as Item and Stance. Stance, so far, has been purely on assets, I believe, and it's been things like Offensive Stance, Defensive Stance, and Balanced Stance, all basically just Kung Fu poses that give you an advantage at either damage or speed or defense, any of those, really. While Item refers to an asset that represents an item, as opposed to, I guess, an asset that represents an ally, but the vast majority of assets represent items anyway, so the item keyword was phased out very, very early in the game's life, and I don't see that as a loss. I don't particularly see stance as a loss either, but stance was at least interesting in a way that item wasn't. Neither of these keywords, however, made it into Jasko's ownership of the game, so neither of them are things that we've seen in the last 10 years. They're just interesting old things from the game's history. Moving on though, we're going to stop looking at keyword traits and look at keyword abilities instead. These are keywords that actually have some mechanical relevance. We're going to start with the statics, which you'll see in blue and purple as though they were forms. That seems like a weird and confusing choice, but at the same time it separates them from the pure white traits. So it is easy to see that these keywords have mechanical relevance, it's just not necessarily easy to see their typing properly. First keyword I want to talk about on this particular list is throw, which just says if this attack is completely blocked, it deals half damage rounded up during the damage step. So you can't fully stop the damage with just a normal block, and more importantly than anything else, that is a static effect, so you do not have to activate it. A throw will always do damage unless some effect specifically says otherwise. It also acts as a trait in terms of how other abilities interact with it sometimes, but I mean, a lot of keywords do that. Then similarly, we have one of my favorites, Flash, ah, skipper of the enhanced step. And yes, it does just say skip this attack's enhanced step. So it stops your opponent using abilities during the attack, stops you using abilities during the attack, in things like Deku's starter deck, it's a really nice way to poke at your opponent and know that none of their nasties are going to happen. But at the same time, if you make a pure flash deck, which has happened in the past, it makes you horribly uninteractive because only responses to playing attacks can do anything. So that can be quite unfun. So flash is best used in moderation from a game design standpoint but I feel like it does have a lot of merit still. And I do like it. And then after that, we have Unique, which is, while this card is in your stage, if there are two or more copies of it in your stage, destroy one of them. So this is interesting, because this is not how Unique used to be worded, and I don't remember the exact wording, but this one specifically doesn't mention what a copy of a card is. What it means is, if there are two cards with the same name, and at least one of them is Unique, you get rid of them until either you only have one or there are no unique ones left. I make the distinction because it is possible to copy a card and lose the unique keyword or in the really old days of Universus, back when it was still called UFS, there were sometimes cards that were printed with unique in a starter deck and without unique in booster packs. Personally, I think having a specifically better version of the same card in a booster pack is scummy, and I'm really glad that Jasko has never done that. But it is something that sets up an interesting situation with the unique keyword. It is also worth noting that unique doesn't actually do anything mechanically. It looks like it does, but there is a separate rule that acts before the cards even reach your stage to say, get rid of them until you only have one unique one or any number of non-unique ones. So the rule goes off before unique does, unique doesn't ever actually get a trigger, which is interesting to say the least. Then we start getting into the abilities which have a little bit of extra text on them. 
The next one is character only, or as it's written in the rules, blank only, which is this card cannot be played unless your identity is blank. So if your starting character is the character that it mentions, there you have it. You can do it. And technically, I don't think there are any character only cards in my hero, but what there are are cards which are blank in hands. So, say, Midoriya in hands, Bakugo in hands, or Bakugo response even on burst speed. These are basically the same thing. They're not quite the keyword, but they're using the same mechanic as the keyword, if that makes sense. And you'll also see ones with, rather than a character name, a character symbol. So like, say, Fire Enhance, or Earth Enhance. I believe we're getting a few more of those in the second set, Crimson Rampage, but we'll talk more about that in the future, I suppose. Now, I just want to quickly mention before I move on that there is a third and final version of this keyword, which is Watermark Only either a card that's specifically only playable if your character matches the watermark, or a watermark enhance, where if your character matches the watermark of that set shown on the card, they can play the ability. This is seen mostly on promos, like, say, Go Beyond or Plus Ultra, where you'll see the UA symbol before the enhance, and unfortunately, being a white UA symbol, it doesn't work with characters with the red UA symbol from Crimson Rampage, which kind of sucks. So similarly to this, we have Deadlock Blank, which is this ability may only be played if the opponent has more than 10 foundations in their staging area. Or stage as it's now known, but the rules haven't been updated to account for that. The opponent is also known as the rival. You'll notice there are a few keywords here which use some of the old terminology. My apologies, but I do have to use the wording as it's written in the rulebook. For the sake of being perfectly accurate, even if those rules themselves could be argued not to be. In this case, Deadlock refers to specifically an ability, so you'll have Deadlock Enhance, Deadlock Form, Deadlock Response, but it is theoretically possible to also have a Deadlock card that just says Deadlock on the keyword line and just says this card can't be played unless your rival has more than 10 foundations in their stage. No such card has ever been printed, but the mechanics are already there for it. And it's an interesting thing to consider, even if it probably wouldn't be good for gameplay. Following that, though, we also have a very interesting one, Combo Blank, which is combo restricted abilities on this card are only playable if the printed properties of the directly preceding cards in the card pool match the requirements of a combo keyword on this card in order. Which is a confusing way of putting it, but let's put it this way. If it says combo weapon and then has a combo enhance, if the previous card in your card pool is a weapon, you can do it. If it says combo weapon foundation, however, you need to have a weapon card, then a foundation card, then this card to be able to do it. So you have to have two cards before this card, one immediately before has to be a foundation, it could be a weapon foundation, it could not. And the one before that has to be a weapon card. It could be a foundation. It could be an attack. It really doesn't matter. And they can't be in the other order. So it can't be foundation, then weapon. It has to be weapon, then foundation. Staff Strike is extremely specific because it's a very powerful card, in short. In most cases, combo will only have one word in the brackets. It is also worth noting that if your opponent removes the combo keyword from the card, then even though the combo ability stays on the card, you can't play it because no combo restriction is met. However, it's also worth noting, and as far as I know, this can only happen in standard, but I could be wrong, that it's possible to add an extra combo requirement, and as long as the combo requirement of one copy of the combo keyword is met, then you can use combo abilities. So if you've got combo weapon and combo foundation rather than combo weapon comma foundation then if you have either a weapon or a foundation preceding it you can use the ability there are a lot of interesting things that you can do with combo but combo is basically just a way to gate abilities to make them only playable under certain circumstances if you've comboed the card with another card then that's it for all the ones in my hero but there are some static abilities outside of my hero as well 
In standard, we also have Desperation X, which is while you're at Desperation, this card's difficulty is X. X equals the rating of the Desperation keyword granting this ability. And there are also Desperation abilities, so Desperation Enhance, Desperation Form, Desperation Response, which are basically you can only use this ability if you are in desperation. A player is considered to be in or at desperation if they are at less than half of their starting character's maximum vitality, or as it's now known, health. So if you're a 628, like a lot of characters are, then you have to be at 13. 14, which is exactly half, would not count. However, 13 would count even if you were a 27 health, because half of 27 is still more than 13, even if it's only 0.5 more. And Desperation is just a way to set the difficulty or lock abilities till later in the game when you've lost health. It's basically a comeback mechanic, that's what it's meant to be. Then we have Safe, which is attacks cannot be played as a reversal to this attack. We'll explain what that means a little later on. And Terrain, which is after this card is added to your staging area, or now known as Stage, destroy all other terrain cards. So this is basically super unique. You can only have one terrain between both players and only the newest one stays in play. You don't get to choose the way you do with Unique, but otherwise it works very similarly. Unique, however, you can have a Unique card and your opponent can have the same Unique card. So that's how terrain is more restrictive. But at the same time, a lot of terrain cards, they'll usually be assets, will allow both players to use at least some portion of their abilities. So it often doesn't matter who has the terrain in play, actually. Then moving on to Enhances, we have... EXX, which is enhanced, discard one or more momentum. This attack gets plus X speed for each card used to pay the cost of this ability. X equals the rating of the EX keyword granting this ability. So EX2, for example, if you discarded one momentum, you get plus two speed. Two momentum, you get plus four speed. Three momentum, you get plus six speed. It's just the two, the X, times the amount of momentum you discard. Nice and simple. Then we have Powerful X, which is Enhanced Discard 1 or 1 Momentum. This attack gets plus X damage for each card used to pay the cost of this ability. X equals the rating of the powerful keyword granted this ability. So it's the exact same thing, but for damage rather than speed. And then we have Stun X, which is Enhanced. Your opponent commits X Foundations. X equals the rating of the Stun keyword granting this ability. So this is a little bit different. There's no momentum cost to it. And it makes your opponent commit stuff. Because this isn't a cost that they commit, they can't commit their character to it, but it also means you can't force them to commit their character to it. And they do get to choose which ones they commit, so be aware of that if they have something that says no to you committing their stuff or punishes you for doing so. But the general use of the stun keyword is just to shut down your opponent's defense on your turn, or if you somehow manage to play an attack during your opponent's turn, sorry, your rival's turn, then you can shut down their offense as well. But that's not something that's likely to happen in My Hero for various reasons that we'll get to. Outside of My Hero, though, we also have a bunch more enhances, such as Age X, which is Enhance. If this attack deals X or more damage, you may search your deck and discard pile for a character card that shares a name with your starting character and add it to your staging area, now known as Stage. X equals the rating of the gauge keyword grinding this ability. So this is just a damage gate where if you pass it, you get to pick up a character card and it can be an additional copy of your starting character, or it can be an alternate version of your starting character because you're allowed to stack those outside of My Hero. So this was introduced, I believe, with the Seventh Frost set as a way for characters to pull out transformed versions of themselves, and it was used very heavily in that set and fairly heavily in the set that followed as well. Age is a lot of fun, but I can see how... Maybe Jasko didn't want that level of ridiculous character shenanigans in My Hero at this stage. And likewise, they didn't seem to want multiple in there either. Multiple X is Enhanced Discard X Momentum, minimum 1, maximum the multiple rating. Add X cards from the top of your discard pile to your card pool, face down as multiple copies of this attack. Add those attacks to the attack stack. So what this means is you discard a bunch of momentum, you put it all into your discard pile at the same time, so you can choose the order. Then you take those cards or whatever else is in your discard pile if they've left, and you put them into your card pool face down as copies of your attack, and then when your attack ends, they resolve in order. So you get to do a whole bunch of additional attacks without having to check for any of them, but it does also put a lot of cards into your card pool to increase progressive. It's also worth noting how a multiple copy is defined. 
Multiple copy of an attack copies all printed values of the original attack, except for the text box. Therefore, multiple copies do not copy traits or abilities, as those are part of the keyword line, which is part of the text box. If a multiple copy would be added to a player's momentum, discard it instead. If a multiple copy would be made of a multiple copy, discard it instead. So there are a lot of little safety features in that, because multiples can get absolutely ridiculous, and we do not want them going infinite. My hero doesn't have multiples. It does have a few sort of pseudo multiples, like say Meteor Shower, which adds itself to your momentum and then picks itself back out to your hand so you can play the same card over and over essentially. It's still using your momentum to make multiple copies of the same attack. It's just not making actual, as defined by the rules, multiple copies. And that's it for enhances for now. You'll notice that multiple EX and powerful all say that you can't discard less than one momentum. And that's just so that you can't use the abilities, trigger abilities by doing so, but not actually have to pay anything for them. You have to actually use the abilities to get effects that care about you using the abilities, which seems perfectly reasonable to me. Going back to my hero, though, we also have responses, the final ability type. Or rather, we have a response. We have Breaker X. Breaker has gone through a lot of changes recently, but with my hero's release, it has become... Response, after you block with this card, your rival's next check to player card gets minus X. X equals the rating of the breaker keyword granting this ability. So it just makes it harder for them to play another card and potentially shuts down your turn if you block with it. It has some very interesting interactions with a non-MHA ability, but more importantly, I think it's just a great way to stop your opponent killing you. And if they have to play around it, they've still put a card they didn't want to play into their pool. So breaker is a real useful ability. And I strongly recommend using Ice Storm to get the most out of it. But while that's the only response for MHA, there is one additional response outside of MHA, which is Reversal. And this is one that people have been really wanting to see in MHA, mostly because we see Reverse Throw and Midair Reversal as Deku cards. And it's just, it's kind of ridiculous. They've got Reverse and Reversal in the name, respectively but they don't have the reversal keyword. However, I can see how reverse throw would be absolutely broken with it. Because the thing about Deku with reversal is that it means his once per turn ability of discarding his hand for plus 10 damage can be done both on his turn and on his opponent's turn. And so he can essentially, in one set of turns, do upwards of 20 damage with just two cards. Well, three if you count the block that you have to play to do the reversal. So this could be quite ridiculous. But yeah, what reversal does is it's response and play this card as a reversal. After your opponent's blocked attack resolves, add this card to the attack stack. So this is when you block your opponent's attack, you let it resolve, you take any damage if you partialed it or if it's a throw or whatever, and then you get to play this reversal from your hand and just attack your opponent in the middle of their turn. So this can be useful for using abilities multiple times, as I've mentioned. It can also be useful for doing that last little bit of damage if you don't have the ability to play the card due to progressive during your turn. Or it can just be really useful for if it's a stun reversal or something like that, so you can lock down your opponent's board by making them commit. There are lots of ways to really mess your opponent's turn up with a reversal. However, there are two restrictions on the reversal. First off, if a player has already attempted to play a card as a reversal to an attack, they cannot attempt to play a second card as a reversal to that same attack. And second, the safe keyword exists, which says specifically, attacks cannot be played as a reversal to this attack. So, if on resolution, your attack has the safe keyword, your opponent cannot respond with a reversal. If it's lost the safe keyword, they can. If it gains the safe keyword after resolution, then it gains it too late. So worth being aware if you're playing reversals that safe attacks do exist and that you need to check your opponent's keyword line just to make sure that you can in fact reversal their cards. But I mean, reversal is just real cool because it makes so much more interaction during your opponent's turn happen. And I really do think MHA should have it. I think that's all for keywords this time. I hope I've explained everything thoroughly and understandably for you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me them on Twitter, in the Discord down below, in the comments here, as well as on Twitch, where I stream card games every Friday at 8pm UK time. But 
even if I'm not playing Universus or I'm playing something completely different on another day of the week, you're perfectly welcome to ask me questions. I'm always willing and happy to talk about MHA cards and Universus in general. It is one of my absolute favorite card games. And yeah, that's it for this time. See you again, everyone. Bye.